Welcome to your watching playthings of Alien Forces, Newsclick's weekly sports news roundup update with uh, myself, Siddhant Ani, and uh, Newsclick sports editor, Leslie Xavier. What's up, Leslie? Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, it's been good on you. are just figuring out stuff. <laughs> uh, with the sports scene happening, I mean, uh, Nadal's victory, I was like, pretty impressed. At our age also, we can probably try something. So, yeah, I watched that match and uh, otherwise it's been like a normal sports weekend. A lot of action happening. AFC Women's Nation Cup, for instance. And uh, I was just following all these things over the weekend and figuring out. Yeah, yeah. So, like you said, it's been it's been a busy week uh, on sports grounds, sports fields, yeah. I think, uh, all over, whether it's tennis courts or football pitches. Uh, we started actually last week uh, with some pretty bad news from the AFC Women's Asian Cup uh, in terms of host India's exit from that tournament. Not because uh, of what happened on the pitch, but because the COVID bio bubble, uh, the biosecure bubble in which the tournament was being played, was somehow breached. And uh, almost all, it turned out, members of the playing staff and many members of the support staff uh, contacted or, or were infected by the virus uh, and therefore India did not have enough available players to field a team in the scheduled game against Chinese Taipei and had to withdraw from the tournament as per the rules that was put forth by the AFC before the tournament actually began. Uh, this was, it was one of our biggest fears that, that the tournament will be hit by COVID-19 uh, and uh, I don't know, all of the preparations, all of the time spent, all of the effort that these players and the coaches and, and all of their staff have put in to preparing for it, especially for India, uh, appearing at this stage after, for the first time since 2003. So, a long gap uh, there. But all of that came, unfortunately, the worst possible scenario is exactly what played out. Uh, and Leslie, in response to that, we have to have done a couple of shows on our uh, other channel, 420 Grams, where we concentrate on what's happening in Indian football, talking about whether or not the, the leaders or the leadership of the All India Football Federation, the people who were tasked with making sure that these women were kept safe uh, and allowed to put their best foot forward, feet forward, uh, in this sense, quite literally. Uh, what was their reaction? to what happened, Leslie? What did we make of that? I mean, it's, uh, uh, firstly, uh, the thing is, uh, I don't know the All India Football Federation, for instance, how they have uh, looked at it, how, how the possible actions that need to be taken and how they have been silent about it. I would like to believe that they are doing so, so that they can wait out for the tournament to get over and then probably lead into the uh, I mean, the inquiry that, that is required. And it, it has to be a pretty much high level inquiry where outside some agency should be should be should be brought in. I I I, I hope that the sports uh, ministry steps in, the government steps in and the conduct conduct a thorough investigation into what exactly happened. Yeah, having said that, we have discussed this in, in our shows and it's it's not about finding out where the players got infected, etc. But finding out how such a lapse could happen when it, it was very clear what is at stake. Hmm. It, it so seems that with the Federation officials, including Prakul Patel, the president, coming out with weird statements, statements like don't point fingers. Of course, it's a time to point fingers. And it's a time to point fingers with the right intent in mind to take this forward, not just to find the guilty party, but also to take Indian football forward. And that's at stake here. That was always at stake with the woman playing playing the Asian Cup. So uh, that 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 gravity of the situation seems to have missed among among the governing body of officials, the governing body itself. And at the same time, the women's football team coach's statement, I mean, it's, it's illogical to the core. Right? He has come out blaming the AFC for, uh, for lax protocols in the hotel that the Indian team was staying. Uh, apparently, his, statement, his statements read that uh, there were a few positive cases in the hotel staff and that was not conveyed to the uh, 
team management and uh, also hotel staff was not really tested in the frequency that it was uh, supposed to be tested and uh, but but uh, the, again we had this discussion in 420 grams saying that uh, uh, i mean presenting the case the uh, right fact that it's not the afc's uh, uh, it was not in afc's control in any case afc is an overseeing body and the local organizing committee which comes under the all india football federation that was directly in charge in, in ensuring the bio bubble is kept intact so all fingers actually point towards the federation and how they conducted it uh, uh, around the system and and for, uh, i mean it's 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 unfortunate beyond words and uh, still we are yet to get clarity on how the players have taken it fully uh, we are trying to i mean in that sense there are, there was a gag on them to remain silent about this till till possibly and I'm, i'm still hopeful that that investigation will bring out shed more light into it and also we we would like to hear what the players are going to i mean what they went to in in the in the past one week and of course they have to clear themselves of the i mean they have to test negative before they get out of the bubble and so uh, the tournament has moved on uh, semi final lineup is out and uh, just now it's it's it hits further when uh, a side like thailand for instance played the quarter finals and they are at stake for the world cup uh, spot also qualifying spot also so uh, uh, as uh, a side like thailand is is uh, we would like to believe that india had a fair chance of giving a fight so so that's uh, that's the point so now it hits harder where we Well, before the start of the tournament, we were talking about them leaving the group stage, uh, managing to leave the group stage, and also having a say in uh, in World Cup qualifying. And they just didn't get a chance to fight at all, and that's so unfair. And why? I mean, the degree of unfairness is 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 astronomical when 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 it it's evident that it's because of laxity. on the part of authority so that's that's the thing so one week down the road i myself am still sad so you can imagine what what the stakeholders the real stakeholders were indian women's football what the players or the youngsters who were looking up to up to these women to lead lead the path uh, bring out indian women's football onto the continental stage they never get got a chance so i i, I can just imagine how much sad they they would disappointed they would be yeah absolutely i'm gutted i'm i'm absolutely certain of that uh, i think the good bit of news from the india team perspective is that at least uh, we know that most of the players uh, and staff that did uh, get the virus are doing well many have recovered uh, since then so no no serious serious cases from that point of view so at least that some little bit of good news not that it takes away in any sense from the disappointment that you were very rightly pointing out and it's not, it's not i think uh, just the disappointment of what happened from the point of view of one tournament but that unfortunately this is uh, kind of just the way things are with women's sport and with women's football in particular uh, is kind of uh, half half baked treatment uh, that that is given out uh when on the one hand we are going all out saying we want to host major tournaments and then all of those things uh but on the other hand when when it comes down to it and uh like you rightly pointed out i think the the ministry needs to take note of this uh because i think some amount of public resources have also gone into ensuring that uh, the team gets the kind, little bit of exposure we've talked earlier of how they went to brazil and uh, sweden and other parts of uh, europe and and to to at least try and get some kind of competitive football because uh, the other fact is that uh, indian football women's football has been largely uh, ignored by the federation the women's league hasn't happened in a couple of years uh, so you know no club level competition either fortunately the senior nationals were conducted and i'm very pleased to see actually on on some some of these new channels that have also come up uh, that are focusing on covering what's happening in the women's game women's footy football women's football india and and some other channels and some of the players coming out and saying how well organized it was good facilities good training which is uh, good good sort of uh, playing facilities 
uh, and how pleased they were to be out there and 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 you know competing with uh, women from around the country at least all all those states that managed to send in teams uh, kerala was playing host to to that uh, tournament uh, but but moving on a little bit uh, lesy like you said the tournament has moved on we're looking forward to some exciting uh, semi final action uh, at least four of the best teams i guess from our pre tournament assessment of it there were always going to be five teams in the running for a semi final spot yeah. uh, and predictably the quarter finals between south korea and australia was very close just the one mm. goal in it uh, south korea knocking out the australians which in a sense could be considered uh, an upset although although korea uh, has a strong team as well they've been i think in in the last four finals never having won it yeah. uh, but but a strong uh, performance from them and of course uh, china and japan both doing extremely well uh, so so you know uh, the i guess uh, at this point the 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 kind of outsiders in in this uh, final four uh, are the philippines team who've done philippines, exceptionally yeah. exceptionally well to reach the stage and i think they'll be delighted uh, if i'm not wrong lesley this means they've already qualified for the next uh, for the, fifa world yeah. cup they are for qualified for the uh, fifa world cup and also i just uh, i'm lucky that japan and china are playing playing the semi finals one of two sides i mean both the sides deserve to be in the final but yeah uh, so south south korea that way i think uh, have a easier road but not discounting philippines is quality is that way they have through the tournament they have showed that they are they belong there that's why they are there in the semi finals as well and uh, let's see how it progresses because that's that's the beauty of being neutrals that way that we can just enjoy the football and i'm sure high quality football will be the world class football because these teams are have played at the world cup multiple locations and uh, it's it's going to be fun in that sense yeah really will be hopefully once again uh, we don't want to get too much into it because we, we still have the, the the very real specter of uh, omicron uh, around us yeah so let's hope that those semi finals and and the final of the tournament as well as the playoffs uh, because of uh, that still matters in terms of world cup qualification yeah, world cup those qualification, things can yeah, hopefully proceed uh, thursday is i think is when the semi finals are being held uh, yeah. like we said earlier we have a, a show that we where we talk about uh, all the football stuff happening in india 420 grams uh, we will be doing a post match uh, well after both the games uh, uh, a show on for 20 grams hopefully we're trying to get in some guests including uh, bala devi who of course uh, went off to glasgow rangers and spent a season season and a half unfortunately a covid hit season as well but but still she spent some time there and unfortunately missed out on even that one match out of uh, in in uh, the asian cup that india did play uh, the draw against iran because of injury but she is very much a member of the senior women's national team and uh, one of the top top talents in the country so hopefully uh, it'll be, i mean it hopefully we can get her on and it'll be i think great to hear from her she would have no doubt spoken to some of the other players her teammates her club mates some of them mm-hmm. uh, and uh, so she can get a sense give us a sense of that as well so do do join in for that show on thursday evening around 9:30 pm when when the game is done uh but uh, lesley from here now we'll give it, uh, put this topic to rest for the moment uh, another sort of uh, bizarre series of events in terms of football leadership uh, unfolded when uh, the president of fifa gianni infantino uh, he was addressing the council of europe and uh, essentially presenting fifa's proposal for Uh, hosting the world cup every 2 years uh, as opposed to every 4 years the way it's currently held or has been since 1930 um now fifa are looking at this lesley because the world cup is the men's world cup is really the only event uh, and i think the women's world cup is now catching up on that front yeah. but the men's world cup is really the, the main event it's fifa's money spinner golden goose whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. um so if you look at their kind of uh, profit and loss books you'll find that uh, in world cup years fifa makes a profit and and in other years it doesn't um so they want to have it more often clearly uh, incl- in- include more teams in that process uh, making it a 48 team tournament 
uh, as opposed to a 36 team tournament as it is now if i'm or is it 32 teams sorry i'm, I'm confused yeah. <laughs> sorry okay yeah so so that expansion is is actually already uh, is happening is is has happened so the uh, 2026 world cup that will be co-hosted by the us and uh, mexico um, we will have 48 teams um UEFA and and uh, the South American uh, countries, traditionally the powerhouses both. Uh, in, one in terms of because they have some of the best players and end up winning the World Cup quite often. And Europe because it not only has some of the top teams in, in world football, but also all the money. Um, so they are both opposed to it because FIFA's revenues going up means their revenues going down. And Infantino has gone on and said... Uh, in a quite bizarre use of language, that somehow hosting the World Cup every two years would give Africans hope uh, and reduce uh, the numbers of them trying to migrate to European shores. Leslie, your comments, please, on this. Uh, bizarre is the word. Oh, maybe it's it's a bit of an understatement as far as words. I mean, a word is concerned because I. Uh, I, I was going through it multiple times, the video as well as the, trying to make sense what this man is trying to achieve by saying this. I, it's very clear that he is trying to push for the two-year cycle for World Cup. And but making this kind of a connection with uh, with African countries and African migration and uh, which is a raging issue in itself, but uh, completely uh, disconnected to football as well because. As far as migration of football talent is concerned, so initially I tried to correlate whether this this guy is uh, talking about footballers traveling to Europe and whether for some reason, some odd reason, a two-year World Cup would boost African football, club football, uh, so much so that African talent can remain in Africa and make a decent living, make a make a make a great living. So I was trying to wonder whether he's mentioning that. Then I realized no, because he's talking about general immigration and uh, completely out of his league, he was blathering. He was clearly blathering. And as far as the two-year World Cup push is concerned, FIFA should realize that they are going to mess it up because we, we have discussed this previously about how uh, sport economy wo works these days, big sport organizing, and how, how cities are not exactly in a great state of health after after an event is hosted. And in, in, in the case of FIFA World Cup, it's the country that hosts, hosts, the, hosts the World Cup. And uh, ultimately, balance sheets, books, everything, FIFA earns out of it. FIFA uses that fund for, for, for the larger good of football, for sure. But uh, the country which hosts it, they not necessarily earn, earn a profit or get a rise, uh, I mean, rise in stature uh, on par with what FIFA is gaining out of it. So, if, if for instance, a two-year World Cup is being staged, after 10, 20 years, two decades, after 10 cycles, maybe there won't be any takers for the tournament. But expanding the tournament to 48 teams is great in the sense that it, it, it is, in a sense, more inclusive. More countries get a chance to play. Uh, definitely, there will be more representation from the Asian continent as well as Africa. And uh, I think the proposal for a two-year World Cup is largely being supported by by some of many of these countries who will uh, benefit directly from that opportunity to play uh, in the World Cup because, of course, it does also make money for uh, some of the smaller nations uh, in order to fund their football uh, programs. Sometimes uh, to the extent where an entire year's budget uh, or or more can be. Uh, sort of comes in as a windfall from, uh, you know, various things like sponsorship money, television rights and other grants that FIFA gives out uh, to countries that are participating in the World Cup, in a World Cup year. Uh, but 48 teams means 48 teams being based in your nation for a month. Uh, you are playing host to, to these uh, 48 teams. That means you require each team has a base, a training base. So, in addition to the stadiums that you need to conduct matches, you also need 48 uh, bases, which means hotel facilities, uh, press facilities, training facilities, all in one location or 
close enough by the yeah. teams can you know access them use them on a regular basis uh, not too many nations have that kind of infrastructure uh, available to even think about uh, kind of hosting it so i think if it happens at all it, there'll have to be some kind of a model where countries will share hosting rights uh, it will become more of a regional tournament maybe like five european countries or five or multiple countries in in south america or africa wherever it happens uh, where you know things are at least contiguous or maybe even not i i'm not sure how they envision the execution of of this massive I tournament let's, let's just uh, discount africa and south america for a minute because i don't think they will be coming forward because they are very unhappy about it because they have their own elite tournament the continental tournament which is which has mm. a global following copa america Both of which I had every two years every two years and uh, and uh, so huge huge following for that and huge i mean see it's a, it's a if it's a matter of revenue generation then uh, fifa and uefa should probably join hands together and ensure that the global bodies and the continental bodies stay relevant because the push real push and challenge is coming from i mean in the in a purely business sense it's coming from the club establishment so mm. uh, so we have had this discussion when world cup happened 2018 world cup when you were in russia also we have the doubt whether at some point the relevancy of world cup will, is it is it is it valid at all because for 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 neutral fans following a country being fan of a country and and uh, enjoying the world cup a month month tournament great but how far will it happen because as far as neutral fans are concerned the infiltration has come from european clubs now i mean mm. all us uh, i'm talking specifically about india or south asia or countries which don't have a stake at the world cup Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, which which football do they follow? Which football they want to follow? It's 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 always club football. So, uh, FIFA should understand that. Uh, look at look back at the history that is happening. Infantino and and the officials who are pushing for this. Uh, it's it, the tournament. How it started? Uh, how relevant was it? In for, for instance, uh, in in the mid mid twentieth century when. there were many countries including india who, who would look at the olympic football championship as the holy grail rather than the world cup world cup was mm -hmm. still small in the 1950s world cup was still small yeah. and it it took a few years it, it took a, so many decades for fifa to reach where it is i hope that they understand that and i hope that they don't ruin the business model ruin the working model that is that is working uh, so far i mean good for them and Two years is a disruption. Two years is not going to add or take football forward. It is going to create fissures within the ecosystem, within sporting governing bodies, and it would be a mad fight of who is who wants to come on top. And uh, so, uh, it's it's uh, as as far as now is concerned, it's a pointless uh, pointless exercise because again, the world of football is reeling and recovering. Football, not just football, any sport for that matter. The, Uh, the sporting organizers uh, organizers are having trouble figuring out means including money to host tournaments and when these all these things are happening you throw in throw in the spanner into the works so let's 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 just hope logic yeah, prevails i mean if they are i think if if the point is to expand or take football forward and that is the focus of these kind of moves then maybe what they should be talking about is having the women's world cup every two years and and the men's world cup keeping it as it is because uh, exactly I, 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 exactly that's that's a, that's a, yeah. i mean best thing to best thing to go forward because then it 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 also lifts stature of the of the women's game and also at the same time it's opening up an avenue for fifa to explore uh, a new revenue stream absolutely so it's not it's, it's a win win situation for for the yeah. game as well as for the body so yeah all right Okay, we'll leave it there, uh, Leslie, for this part. Finally, uh, Rafa Nadal. Okay, your favorite player, I, I see. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I, I mean, like like we we've talked before, I think, uh, on this subject. Uh, but the pandemic really has uh, made us very much aware of who, who our friends are and and who are who are not. Uh, and you know, it, while I, I have. Uh, tons of respect for uh, Novak's Djokovic uh, and his tennis playing abilities and for a long time he was a guy because you know he's a bit of an upstart and all that <laughs> uh, and challenging the greatness of 
Roger Federer and and uh, Rafael Nadal in a generation of I think men's tennis that was uh, quite special. Uh, I mean, to to live through, to witness, to watch, uh, see these guys in action in 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 the flesh uh, against one another. I mean, it's been spectacular. Uh, Nadal yesterday though taking it to to another level in in some ways when he was two sets uh, down people were writing him off and i think they forgot who who who's in the game <laughs> nadal of course you can you can never discount him but of course you look at his age 35 and he is playing 25 year old medvedev who is considered one of the best uh, hard court surface players at present Mm. And in his prime, world number two, mm. and yeah, and in the absence of the top player of the world, you expect the world number two to win it, and then you get a oldie right in front of you. But I mean, Nadal's game so physically demanding, and he has not changed at all. And it's it's just, I mean, when I, when I, when I saw him play yesterday and make that comeback, and I was. Till till the fifth set, till the end of the fifth set, towards the end of the fifth set, you still know that Medvedev is winning. You still, I mean, I have, I mean, if you look at the three great players you mentioned, uh, I consider Federer to be a notch above all the, the other two, just for his artistry, and I tend to admire artistry more than anything else. But uh, Nadal's work ethic, Nadal's kind of grit and fight that he brings onto the game. It's, 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 uh, for a person who has come through fight sport, that is one value that, that you, you just can't ignore. You just, I mean, whatever the artistry, whatever the other part of it, and you just can't uh, be without respecting that. And then he brought it out. He brought it out. Uh, he is fighting pain. He is fighting injuries. He is making that comeback, self doubt, whatever that is happening. Because it's very clear at 25, you can't play at that level. How he, how is he managing to play? You just can't understand it. Is it the mind? And this is going to be a Nadal's year because imagine the next Grand Slam is uh, on clay. <laughs> and so I'm expecting him to extend the record a couple of this thing and also I have a couple of uh, trophies. But also, I'm expecting Novak Djokovic to actually catch up with the island overtaking because Djokovic, as a player, is 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 still got a few more years and is is capable of winning a few more championships. Uh, getting back to Nadal, uh, what is what makes him special is is, is uh, probably I mean beyond the game, he has he has decently talented with with his with his backhand, with his forehand, with his top spins, whatever. But he also improvised yesterday against Medvedev, brought out all his experience, but also a clear strategy. He was trying to vary the length. He was trying to upset the length with which he was returning to Medvedev so that uh, uh, he gets... And slowly he got into the game. If you look at the first set, uh, uh, it was it was one-sided in a way. And second set, Nadal could have won it. Uh, it was tight. Medvedev... I mean, being the player he is, you can't discount him. He keeps coming back at you, coming back at you. Nadal almost sealed it, then he broke back. And tiebreaker, of course, Nadal was leading again, same thing, and he, he came back and he won that. But uh, for a Nadal fan, that probably would have been the moment they would realize that there is something special that is going to happen now because he was he had reeled him. He had measured him, he had gotten him measured, he had reeled him. Third set, again, it it, it could have gone the other way because he was down by a break, by four, three break points. And then from there, the turnaround happened. And uh, when that was happening, the only thing that you do when Nadal's marathon comebacks happen, marathon matches happen, is just to sit and see, <laughs> enjoy, enjoy what's, what's out there. And uh, I'm just glad with, 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 uh, by, for being a sports journalist in this era where we have seen the greatest ever generation of tennis players. And I, 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 I'm not even saying arguably here. This is the greatest ever tennis generation as far as longevity is concerned, as far as quality is concerned, as far as records are concerned, beyond par. 
we we are just lucky that we were able to witness it and nadal personally i have seen him in action in chennai open once and uh, also in the davis cup in delhi a few years back and just simply simply magical Uh, but yeah, I, I was I was just saying that I absolutely agree with you, man. When when Nadal is on a roll like that, all you do is sit down and you get yourself a, a you know a refill of whatever it is that you're drinking, and you <laughs> sit and watch uh, till till the end of the ride because uh, that's what it is. And and I think he's someone who is inspired also fans uh, across the world for the yeah. tennis he's. and, and the, also the kind of off court stuff the kind of person he has shown himself to be or at least appeared to be uh, so yeah congratulations to rafael nadal and and to us for being alive in this time to uh, be witness to some of this uh, greatness You're absolutely right between between uh, you know serena williams and and uh, federer nadal djokovic uh, it's been uh, a special i think couple of decades for the game of tennis uh, on that note i think we'll also put an end to this episode of play things thanks very much leslie for uh, sharing some of your thoughts on some of these uh, i think uh, quite interesting uh, talking points from the world of sport that went by last week and even beyond that uh, like we said lots more to look forward to particularly the afc asian women's cup semi finals and final coming up later on this week uh, the final of that tournament is on the 6th of feb being held in mumbai if i'm not wrong uh, so we'll be covering those uh, uh, matches on our sister channel 420 grams so do join in